It's fantastic to be here with you all. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and I'm just going to assume you're all seeing my screen. I think that's true. So very nice to be here with you. Thank you for carving out some time in your busy afternoon. Um, we've we've pretty tightly curated the content that we're going to prepare, uh, you know, share with you all. I think it's going to be interesting. I think you're going to learn some new things that maybe you hadn't thought of before. And um, we're going to share some new features and capabilities that you can bake into your own workflows. So who am I? Again, my name is Kevin Allwell. I think third place in a hackathon is probably the highest I've ever achieved anything in my life. But um, but I am a, a principal solutions engineer at GitHub, and I work primarily with developer communities within financial services companies, consulting groups, and digital media. And so that kind of affords me the privilege to learn from developers and AppSec leaders, you know, what types of challenges they're facing in securing their own developer workflows. And of course, from you all, the developer, it helps us understand, you know, what are the types of points of friction that you're facing in your own contribution workflow. So what we want to do is kind of walk the line, of course, of balancing uh, application security with, you know, a great developer experience. And so my hope for this session um, is that you'll walk away having a deeper understanding of, you know, some standard secure dev workflows. So we're going to take a look first at the data we're pulling from the open source community that will give you insight into, you know, you not being the only one who are, you know, who's facing these types of problems. We'll talk about active credential security. And so what that means, uh, we'll see later on. And of course, how to keep your secrets secure with Actions, Vault, and advanced security features. So that's native uh, AppSec within GitHub. And maybe what you'll notice from these topics is they've been finely curated. I kind of broke them down because we only have 30 minutes to spend together. I have some demos that I think will probably fill up our time. And so my hope is that if you have questions, if you have comments along the way, you're dropping them in you know, either the YouTube channel, wherever you're interfacing with us from, we'll get to you um, and we will uh, you know, obviously support any follow-up that... Uh, that needs to be done. And so let's talk for a moment about the state of application security. From GitHub, and this reflects also in the enterprise community, we're seeing more credential leaks than ever. And so there's a 50% compound annual growth rate in terms of the number of credentials that are making their way back in your repositories. And so if you're like me, and I've done a talk in the past, I think it was like 2015, and I was actually going to do, um, I was going to do a demo in front of a live audience and it was with a Twilio service. And basically before I went to the, do the demo, it was failing. I couldn't figure out why. And I had leaked my credential on github.com and somebody was actually sending text messages, explicit French text messages in France using my credentials. And I, I basically found out later on that it was because I had pushed my token into uh, you know, my public repository, which happens all the time, right? We do as much as we can to prevent that as developers, but sometimes you have it stored in there just for your testing. Maybe you have it stored in your comments. You know, there's all types of ways that credentials can still make their way back in your applications. And so this has huge implications, right? It's very costly, as we've seen in the past, to not only have application security vulnerabilities in terms of the source code itself, allowing attackers to exploit your application, but also, you know, if you're leaking some credential that gives someone unauthorized access to your software, it can be a tremendous problem. And so what we're seeing across the community is, and it sounds like Kyle also had an interest because it's top of mind for everyone, it's about developer empowerment. So how can we, you know, empower you, the developer? How, how can we on the AppSec side of the house and engineering leaders empower the developer in order to increase the stakeholdership of the security of the applications they're delivering? So we can find these vulnerabilities early on in the SDLC and we can address them where it's super inexpensive to do that. In fact, we've seen that a great place to have a conversation about the security of a feature you're shipping is, you know, where you're kind of talking about that implementation in the pull request workflow, right? And so what we're talking about here is um, proactive, reactive credential management, and also how to securely connect with third-party services so that you don't have to even add your credentials back in your source code, um, you know, which, which can obviously lead to an exploitation. And so let's talk first about credential security. And I think GitHub's doing something really interesting here in partnership with HashiCorp, which is we're working with the community of service providers to actually kind of fine tune the token format so that we can detect those credentials when they're ma they make their way back into your repositories. 
And so that means when they make their way back into your open source repos. And so that workflow I was describing to you in the past where I had, you know, gone on stage and, and everything was falling apart and I couldn't figure out why. And so um, now today, what would basically happen is GitHub would automatically detect that credential has been leaked. It would privately communicate with the service provider who would then inform me and probably automatically rotate that token on my behalf so that um, both myself and the service provider are not, uh, you know, are not exploited. And so this has kind of translated now into those folks who are doing their enterprise development on GitHub. And so if you have private repositories, and it doesn't have to be enterprise, right? It could just be, are you working on some project for school? Are you working on some project, you know, as part of a startup, whatever it is, in a private repo today, you can uh, enable secret scanning if you have access to what we call advanced security features. And so again, what's really compelling here is there's something like, I think it's 75 million developers on the platform. And so it's really nice for you as a developer that all these service providers want to make sure that your credentials or their credentials that you're using are not leaked back into the community so that you're exploited, right? And so how can we kind of react to credentials that have made their way back into their source code? And so I'm going to walk you through a demo workflow of what that looks like if I've leaked for example, um, one of my hashy credentials back inside my repository. And then how do we make sure that never happens again, right? And so um, those community patterns make it a very high true positive rate, a very good experience for you when you enable this stuff that if we say there's an alert, you know, there's a darn good chance that there is an actual vulnerability inside your application. And so we're talking today exclusively about secret scanning. I kind of left out static application security testing and all the other types of security tests that you can do just in the interest of time. But uh, I think we'll have enough to bite off uh, just with this. And so naturally what kind of comes up in terms of, okay, well, if there's a good chance that my testing and my implementation for my different services is going to lead to a credential making its way back in my application. Is there a better way to do this? And so HashiCorp shipped a vault action and it, it, the vault actions on version 2.4. And the reason that matters is, as you'll see in a moment, is because there is a preferred new mode of integration using OIDC that is really exciting. And so the idea here is, um, OK, if we're preventing credentials from making their way into our source code proactively, if we're reacting to any secrets that are there already, you know, how do we integrate our CI services or different services back into Vault or another, you know, another tool in order to, um, you know, in order to ensure the integrity of our, of our credentials? And so the, the standard workflow that you're probably familiar with is to use a static credential inside your workflow. So for example, you might have a GitHub Actions workflow or a Jenkins workflow, where you have your token that provides access to some, uh, some vault resources, right? And so that credential has to be stored inside of the repository under your GitHub secrets. So you're using kind of GitHub secrets as your key management system principle, if you will, and then using that to get access to all the other services. And so what we're proposing as a secondary workflow that hopefully um, you can consider adopting at scale is to use OIDC instead of that token auth, okay? And so basically what we would be doing with OIDC is we, we would be basically preventing the need to duplicate your credentials as long-lived GitHub secrets. Instead, you basically create a trust relationship on your cloud provider, and then you update your workflow so that they can request a short-lived access token from Hashi through OIDC. And so you'll have more granular control over how those workflows can use your credentials. Um, it'll use your cloud providers auth N and auth Z tools to control access to the, those cloud resources. And the nice thing here is that you won't have to worry about rotating your credentials, okay? Because your cloud provider is gonna issue short-lived access tokens. So Hashi is basically gonna issue a token that you can access uh, you know, your credentials with for a, a defined, a short period of time, which is a really nice way um, to gain access only temporarily. And so I wanted to spend the majority of our time together actually you know, poking around in the platform and seeing what this, this experience is like. And so I wanted to provide this really simple workflow diagram to show you each of the different demos we'll be doing before we do them. And so the first demo is for secret detection. And so basically 
this is the workflow I was describing earlier. I, as a developer, inadvertently contribute some secrets back to my repository, or maybe I don't realize how, you know, how damaging that can be, and my secrets are detected, and I'm made aware that they've been detected through a vulnerability alert. So I want to showcase that experience. Um, I want to showcase how it's baked into the, you know, the repository and the DevX on GitHub. Uh, you know, and obviously how that workflow is kind of optimized. And so the next thing is actually a push protection. So this is really interesting for you all because I don't think anybody outside of like 30 people within GitHub and a handful of customers who have tested this feature have actually seen push protection working in the wild. I think it's actually shipping today. It's been in private beta. So this is a really exciting new ship. Um, and basically what we'll be able to do is as a developer, if you inadvertently contribute some secret back to repository, we can put a check in place to make sure that you don't do that. You know, so as a developer, I would have loved to have known ahead of time, hey, you're, you know, you're pushing your Twilio credential back into GitHub. You probably don't want to do that, right? And then I'd be able to ferret it out of my Git history. And so we want to enforce a push protection. And I'll talk about what's included in scope of a push protection and what's not today. So we'll understand some of the boundaries there. Okay, so we have reactive in workflow one. Do I have any secrets in my source code? How do I respond to that? How do I make sure that secrets don't find their way there in the future? And then three and four, again, are about how do I optimize my integration with third-party services such that I don't need to store static credentials anywhere inside of GitHub. Instead, on, on uh, workflow number four, I can create that trust relationship. So GitHub knows, uh, or, or, or rather, Hashi knows, who you are, what you're authorized to access, and provides temporary, uh, you know, uh, temporary access to your credentials. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the platform. And so maybe one of the first things that you're noticing here is um, is this security tab inside my repository. So again, we're hoping to keep the context for all AppSec insight regarding your application within this single interface, right? Within your repository interface as a developer. And so while you can gain insight into your CI CD workflows with actions, you can also see um, the security status of your applications. And so I'm going to skip over some of these other services and just talk about the secret scanning experience. So maybe one of the first things you see here is there's three open alerts and don't worry, I've rotated all these credentials. So you crazy hackers who are trying to type this in manually and make some requests to see if they're valid. Everything here has been invalidated. I hope I've learned my lesson. Uh, other not, otherwise, you'll teach me that. So joking aside, the first thing that you'll notice is we've detected these three credentials in some commits in the history of this repository. And we automatically associate these credentials with a service provider. So again, we work with HashiCorp. We work with all these different service providers, whether that's AWS, Azure, GCP, in order to understand those patterns. And so we can confidently say where this came from and then where it lives, right? So where do we detect it inside your commit? And so when you start looking a little bit deeper, you start to notice, okay, well, this com this uh, credential lives within my workflows directory under my vault token YAML pipeline. So it looks like I've dropped that in. I was probably doing some testing. So you can see I have, you know, I'm using, for example, that workflow number three, some static credential inside of GitHub. And I was doing some testing. I just pushed my token. It happens all the time, right? And so you see that commit. I can click through there and to see, uh, you know, the commit itself that I leaked this credential. But maybe what I'll just show you is the workflow, okay? Because this is really the workflow that during this talk, we're going to be evolving from, you know, what this kind of primitive injecting your token uh, statically here to leveraging again, um, token auth and then OIDC. So this is the evolution, right? So I can mark this as whatever, I'm probably gonna mark it as revoked, but um, how do I prevent a, let me go ahead and uh, mark this as revoked. And how do I prevent uh, you know, this from happening again, right? And so that's where we start to look at workflow number two, right? So now that we've kind of addressed this vulnerability, alert, how do we make sure that never happens? And so what I'll show you is the workflow as a developer who's trying to push a credential back into a repository where a push protection has been enabled. So let me just show you this really simple repository. You see some different files and directories, none of which are really that important. But the point is that if I um, drop a credential in uh, server.js, for example, if I drop a credential here, 
gonna go ahead and paste in my GitHub credential, which is also rotated. Here we go. Full. Well, so what I'm just showing you here is I modified server.js. And so previously there was no token here. I added some token. And I'm just going to go ahead and, and try to push this back to my repository. So let's just go ahead. I'll call this oops. I'll do a git push origin main. Okay, and so this is the ex this is the experience that you have today through the CLI. Okay, and so what we've noticed is that a secret's been detected. It's a type of a GitHub personal access token. Um, here's the commit that we found it in the path to it, right? And uh, and a workflow in order for the developer for you to work around, um, you know, if you did still want to make this push. And so we're just making aware, hey, there's a credential that exists, and when your commits, we're fairly confident. I think it's like a 95% true positive rate, and that's because we either this is a GitHub credential or somebody's provided us with their credential pattern to make sure that this doesn't happen again. Okay, so we rejected this push, which is pretty awesome. Okay, it's kind of like the holy grail, if you will, of preventing those credentials from making their way back in your workflows. So let's talk about um, how you might implement an integration between um, GitHub or th third-party CI, really. It doesn't have to be GitHub. I'm using Actions, but that and Vault. Okay, and so we'll show the evolution there. So uh, maybe what I'll do is first go into one of my workflows and showcase a really simple GitHub action, okay? And so what you'll notice is that I have a manual trigger on my workflow. And basically what it does is it executes a job on my self-hosted machine, which happens to be running locally. Okay, so it's running locally. And I'm using this, this vault action at the latest version. I encourage you to also do that. To, um, in, in order to leverage OIDC. I kind of hacked on this. I mean, it takes a long time to put together some of these demos that you can breeze through in five minutes, right? You just kind of work on them and, and then experience the pain. So I've done that for you already. I hope you don't have to do that. And so very simply, um, what, I, you know, what you might have to do here on this type of workflow is pass in a token in order to retrieve your vault credentials. And so I'm using the native Secret store, the key management system on GitHub. So this is scoped my repository. I'm dynamically injecting my vault token that I generated when I, when I spun up a dev um, vault server. And so you can see that's also running here locally. And so I have my vault server, I have my GitHub Actions runner, and, um, and I'm retrieving my NPM token from there. So let me go ahead and kick off this workflow. It should be really riveting in order to see that the auth process take place and our credential be returned. So let me go ahead and, uh, and just kick off this workflow and see if our self-hosted runner is going to pick up that job. And so the self-hosted runner is basically polling GitHub for any jobs that it needs to pick up. You can see that it's picked that up, it's running the job, and hopefully what we see as a return is a, is a success, but of course we don't. So let's check that out for a moment. Response 404, get vault secrets not found. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. Let's just validate that we have. So this is why vault, uh, this is why these demos are so riveting because you can watch me somewhat flounder as I get this up and running for you. So let me go ahead and just update the credentials in my workflow. So this is that native, I was talking about the native repo secret store. So this is exactly that. I'm going to update my vault token so that my workflow has access to that. And um, what else do I think needs to be done? I don't think anything else. I think we're going to point to this environment. I think we should be okay. We have to make sure that environment is seated. And so what I've also done here, I'm going to share with you are some steps in order to configure your vault for OIDC. And so you're going to see me do them. Um, they also exist on this repo that I'm going to make public after the, the talk. So I'm going to go ahead and just walk through the enablement steps here. So let's go ahead and vaults already started. We're going to enable the GWT auth. So these are the steps for OIDC enablement, but um, it makes sense to do both at the same time. And now you can see some of the pain that I had experienced in the past. And so, um, 
good news is that you don't have to experience that yourself. I'm defining a role that will have uh, a policy associated with it that will give me access to a specific path to retrieve my credentials. And so you don't necessarily need to follow along and try to parse all that I'm doing. I think what matters most is, um, is that you have access to this documentation afterwards, which I'll be sure to share. And so I'm just gonna update that policy. So now we've created a role associated with a policy that provides access. Um, oh, that's why, okay. Cause I've actually changed the, the NPM token. I forgot that I did uh, value of the token. I forgot that I did that. Okay, so let's try this again and, um, and see what, how things go. I think we should be okay. I'm gonna go ahead and do that, kick off the actions workflow and we'll see what happens. So again, we're pulling from the runner. Move this over. Running the job vault test. And the test succeeded, friends. So that's the thrill of live demos. It looks like it succeeded. So we should see our CI update here. There it is. So we had 19 seconds to go. Let me go ahead and open this up so we could make sure that that credential was returned. Where's my vault? See, oh, there it is, it's printed out. Okay, so stressed turns into desserts when we get it from, uh, from vault. And so this is, you know, what I've just demonstrated to you is actually nothing novel, right? Like a lot of us already have baked out these workflows, they're far more sophisticated. But the point is the evolution from using some static credential inside the native key management system of GitHub to creating that trust relationship with OIDC so you no longer have to manage those credentials. Okay, and so in this case, you should be able to, again, um, use your role with this updated action in order to access your NPM token, which lives on this path within my vault. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and uh, we'll kick it off and, and see how it goes. Let's monitor our runner here. Watch that job get picked up. And it looks like that one succeeded on the first try, which is awesome. The first of, uh, of many tries. And so if I go back to my job here, I'll see the same thing, which is that I've returned desserts instead of stressed. So friends, that's really what I wanted to share with you was <clears throat> how you can use the latest vault action in order to create a trust relationship between GitHub and vault so that you can retrieve your credentials safely, securely. You no longer have to store any static creds inside of GitHub. If you do have to do that for some reason, you have that updated workflow where you have automated secret detection baked in. Um, you have the ability to prevent those secrets from uh, making their way there again or in the first place. So I encourage you to take advantage of that. And try out OIDC. Try it out not just for integration with vault, but try it out for integration with you know, any modern service provider. I think today we support um, Hashi, AWS, GCP, and Azure. So I encourage you to uh, do that. Reach out to me if you have any comments, questions, any thoughts about the best mode of implementation. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, my email is allwell-kevin at github.com, or you can find me on LinkedIn, Kevin Allwell, if that wasn't uh, obvious. And um, this gist is what I'll post in our chat after this talk. And, um, and you will have access to those steps I followed in order to get the workflow running again. Okay. So thank you very much for your time. It was an absolute pleasure. And I hope to be back with you again.